South Korea's president announced that she's giving up her right to choose the country's prime minister as the government tries to recuperate from a corruption scandal. It's a breakthrough that oncologists could never have envisioned even just a few years ago, looking for the answers to cancer in a vial of blood. We're getting reports of a possible terror attack, which is prompting a massive police response. And we continue to follow that breaking story out of Manchester, England, where during an Ariana Grande concert, there were at least one or a couple of loud explosions. We understand there have been several fatalities. The jury deliberations will continue tomorrow in the murder trial of a Georgia father whose toddler died after being left in a hot car. John, both Clinton and President Obama stressed the need for a peaceful transition of power this morning. That is Muhammad Ali's widow there, Lonnie Ali. Thousands of friends and fans and dignitaries and celebrities are paying their last respects. Trump was uh, speaking at 2 o'clock inside the convention center. He spoke for about an hour, so 3 o'clock. I'm sure you're excited for this day to come to a close as millions of voters are. Hillary Clinton's definitely <laughs> racked up some miles lately. I have Coastal here with me today. It's two different tubes that you have. And so the first one is this transplanting gel. I'm putting one coat of this transplanting gel on. And it says while it's wet that I'm supposed to put the fiber lashes. And this is, this is the wow factor. This is what's supposed to make your eyes pop. really pop. So nice to have you with us on this last day in May. I'm Koshal Patel, a Pennsylvania man in police custody. After authorities found firearms and 90 rounds of ammo in his car parked outside the Trump International Hotel in D.C. this morning, police got a tip that 43-year-old Brian Moles had a handgun and a rifle in his car, and he was headed to the Capitol. When police caught up to Moles, they found the guns and ammunition in his car. Police say that the tip may have prevented a major disaster. The hotel is just a few blocks away from the White House. Moles is now charged with carrying a pistol without a license and having unregistered ammo. After saying that he would take some time to think about staying in the Paris Climate Agreement, reports from Washington are indicating that the president will pull the U.S. out of the deal. According to inside sources, the EPA director is leading the effort to remove the U.S. from the agreement before officials announce the decision. The president promised on the campaign trail to pull the U.S. from the deal, saying it adds more regulations that hurt American businesses. The White House has yet to make it official, but the president tweeted that he would make an announcement in the next few days. Japan's prime minister says he wants his country to work with China in order to resolve the crisis with North Korea. Shinzo Abe and the Chinese state council called on allied countries to play a constructive role in dealing with threats from Pyongyang. A request comes after North Korea launched a series of missile tests, including one on Sunday that landed in the Sea of Japan. Abe discussed the need for Japan and China to cooperate in order to find peace in the region. Chinese state councilor is in Tokyo this week to meet with officials and discuss issues such as the conflict with North Korea. A powerful bomb hidden in a sewage tanker exploded during the morning rush hour in the center of Afghanistan's capital today, killing at least 90 people. There's more on the attack that also left hundreds injured, including several Americans and damaged embassy buildings. Meanwhile, Germany's chancellor is condemning this morning's attack in Afghanistan. During an event in Germany today, Angela Merkel expressed her condolences and deepest sympathies to the victim of the blast. Chancellor urged all countries around the world to stand up for the dignity and freedom of all mankind. In moments like these, Merkel went on to say citizens from all countries must be united in the fight against terrorism. The Pentagon announced the U.S. will start arming Kurdish militia members fighting ISIS in Syria. The Pentagon said the weapons were approved before a major offensive to retake the city of Raqqa. Islamic State is calling the war-torn city its capital as it continues to lose ground to allied forces in Syria. That move is expected to upset Turkey since they view the Kurdish militia as allies to the banned Kurdish Workers' Party. Meanwhile, Russia's Navy fired at least four cruise missiles against Islamic State targets close to the Syrian city of Palmyra today. Russian Defense Ministry said a warship and a submarine launched the missiles from the Mediterranean Sea. You can see in the video, which shows warheads hitting the ISIS shelters that held soldiers and heavy equipment. Russian officials say they warned the U.S., Israel and Turkey before conducting the attack. Russia itself has been a steadfast ally of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, supplying air support for the regime's campaign against ISIS since 2015.
There will be a moment of silence later this week to honor the men killed in last week's attack on a train in Oregon. Portland drivers will stop their trains at the nearest stations and bus drivers will pull over at stops at noon on Friday. Local transportation agency says they stand together with their community wishing for peace for those who are forever affected by the tragedy. Makeshift Memorial has also been set up at a local park where many across the city are leaving flowers and notes of encouragement. This all stems from a racially charged attack on a train Friday that left two men dead. An investigation is underway after three people were shot and killed inside a Texas car dealership Tuesday. Officials responded to reports of several gunshots at a Nissan dealership less than 50 miles from Dallas. The dealership CEO says two men walked into the store and misrepresented themselves as federal agents, claiming they were waiting for someone who they planned to arrest. He says the men waited more than two hours until a third man arrived. When the two men pulled out handcuffs, the target pulled out a gun and shots were fired. All three were killed in the exchange. A Mississippi National Guardsman died during training exercises in California Monday. Sergeant Kyle Thomas was among four soldiers conducting maneuvering operations in a tank when it rolled over, killing Thomas. Three other members were injured during the exercise. The four guardsmen of the 155th Armored Brigade team were participating in a two-week training program focusing on maneuvering tanks. Two of the soldiers have been released from the hospital and one remains in stable condition. A former Tennessee teacher accused of kidnapping one of his students and crossing state lines pleaded not guilty to charges in federal court Tuesday. Tad Cummins was indicted earlier this month. 50-year-old sparked a nationwide manhunt when he went missing in March with a 15-year-old former student. They were found hundreds of miles away in Northern California, where they had been posing as a married couple. Cummins faces a maximum sentence of life in prison. All right, go ahead. Eight has no place in San Diego schools. San Diego Unified School District is getting major backlash for its anti-Islamophobia campaign. Six parents filed a lawsuit against the district on claims the new policy violates the Constitution and grants special treatment to Muslim students. New plan was passed by school board members last month in an effort to deal with bullying, but those opposing the change say it goes against religious freedom and demand it be revoked immediately. This morning, a Malaysian Airlines flight from Melbourne to Kuala Lumpur turned around after a passenger tried to force himself into the cockpit. Authorities say the man claimed to have a bomb, but it turned out to be a portable charger for electronic devices. He was arrested with Malaysian officials saying that he was believed to be drunk. Plane successfully landed back at Melbourne Airport, and passengers are talking to investigators. Flights from the airport were briefly diverted, but regular service has been restored. Two different brands of nuts are being recalled for unrelated listeria contaminations. Simple Truth's macadamia nuts and Ava's uh, organic roasted and salted cashews are both being recalled. Recall macadamia nuts were sold in clear 12-ounce plastic bags. As for the cashews, they come in 8-ounce tubs. So far, no illnesses have been reported. Well, dog owners in Florida may want to think twice before heading to the dog park. Seven cases of highly contagious dog flu have been confirmed by vets across the state, and more cases are pending. Now, this is the first outbreak since the flu strain made its debut back in 2015, when more than 1,000 dogs were infected. If diagnosed, pet owners are advised to keep their pooch quarantined for at least four weeks. New York plans to build a walkway and 9-11 memorial to honor rescue and recovery workers at Ground Zero. Governor Andrew Cuomo and former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg announced the plans on Tuesday along with former Daily Show host John Stewart. Stewart has been a longtime advocate for the health care of the Ground Zero workers and is a board member for the National September 11th Memorial and Museum. The group in charge of the effort says the people involved in recovery efforts deserve a fitting tribute for their sacrifice. A new exhibit in Belgium focusing on famous inventor and painter Leonardo da Vinci. A hundred machines invented or improved by da Vinci will go on display for the first time Thursday. Some of his 500-year-old designs, including a bird-like airplane, has now been transformed into a life-size version. In addition to the paintings and original documents by da Vinci and other artists of his time, like Michelangelo, will be on display. The exhibit will stay in Belgium for six months before going on a 10-year world tour. Well, this next story may get you to go to bed early tonight. A new study finds sleep deprivation can cause your brain to eat itself. A neuroscientist in Italy found if people don't get enough sleep, their brains actually start to feed off of the healthy neurons. 
Cells that normally clean out dead neurons during sleep and rejuvenate the brain. But scientists claim for those who didn't get enough shut-eye, the cells go into overdrive and actually cause damage. Study is alarming as around 40% of Americans sleep six hours or less every day. I try to get to bed so I'll have eight hours of sleep, Tabitha, mm -hmm. but it just never happens. Eight all of a sudden becomes six. Especially in our industry, I feel like we're always like in current events. We're always keeping we're ourselves always up reading. reading. Like we're I can't reading. stop reading. I'm <laughs> exactly. like, put away the tablet. <laughs> so true. All right, that's gonna do it for me. Have a great day. Here's Tabitha. Thank you. Won't even leave their home to come out because they're basically hostages when they're in their own environment because of how disfigured they are. The photos are heinous faces burn beyond recognition. It's called dowry burning, and it breaks Dr. Manish Batra's heart. It may start off as I was burned accidentally, and then the story becomes, well, yes, my husband did this because uh, they were, they were, you know, we didn't pay the dowry, or my family wasn't able to afford the dowry. Dr. Batra is a Del Mar plastic surgeon. He just got back from India, where he's been going for years to offer free surgeries to the poor. He's seen an increase in dowry burnings. Over 10% of our patients actually had uh, significant third-degree burns uh, through the, you know, the face, neck, chest, and extremities. This is just one of the dozens of patients Dr. Batra has helped. 39-year-old Kapila Tanasia was burned by her husband with battery acid. This is what she used to look like. Because they're burned uh, on their face or neck, everything sort of melts together into one structure. So a lot of times their face and chin will be stuck to their chest so they can't actually eat. We've had uh, you know, situations where they can't move their arms because their elbows are burned so they can't feed themselves, they can't hold their children. Accepting dowry has been illegal in India since 1961. It's an ancient tradition where a bride brings money or goods to a marriage. While it's not widespread, it still thrives in rural towns and villages. It's going to take not just, you know, the 40 years from 61 to now, but probably another 100 years to uh, get things to the point where the women are being treated as equal citizens. One of the areas that we're working in right now is the Dane district. Dr. Anita Raj from the School of Medicine at UC San Diego travels to study dowry burnings. The women remain. Uh, in these situations, they don't have uh, another place to go. A divorce dishonors the family. Because of the shame, getting accurate numbers on this crime is nearly impossible. Hundreds or even thousands of cases can go unreported every year. And for the ones that make it to court, it takes decades for them to get justice. <laughs> Dowry burnings aren't just isolated to India. They're happening in other parts of Asia and the Middle East. This map shows you where else. Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh. Experts don't know why they're seeing an increase. Dr. Batra feels these women are the lucky ones. They survived. Most don't. He plans on going back to India next year to continue providing those free surgeries. Koshal Patel, 10 News.